ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Maybe. Sometimes. Tell me about this. I want to know more. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Holy cow. We've had a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, on Monday, there was quite an event for Heart of America, mm-hmm. <laughs> which was the eclipse. That's right. <laughs> and not the movie, but the actual moon going in front of the sun <laughs> eclipse. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. From my vantage point, I don't know about yours, Terry, but we didn't see it really at all, even though we were supposed to see a portion of it or some kind of version of it I'm not really sure how they we weren't in its path of totality how's that for science (laughs) yes neither were we and it's sort of like when I thought about it I could think well gee the quality of light is a little bit different it's a little darker but you know any other day I would have just thought it was cloudy well see we didn't even get that no we just got the light went a bit flat like by a bit tiny bit Uh and then um there were some shadows, but I didn't notice the crescents and the shadows like that, you know, we saw all over social media. However, yeah. what I did see on social media was Catherine's photo. Yes. You yes. were in the path of totality, Catherine. Somebody among us cared about this enough to <laughs> travel to where I could actually be seen. That's How, right. Tell us. Where were you? Yes. I was in Southern Illinois. My brother lives in Central Illinois, my younger brother. And so I basically said so are you are you gonna go you know are you gonna travel a little further south so you can see it and he said yeah I think we probably will so then I said well can I come (laughs) (laughs) um and he said sure you can come um and so then when I told my younger sister that I was gonna do that she said well I want to (laughs) go um so she decided she lives in California and yeah. Northern, Northern California. Um, so she decided to go. Um, she grabbed herself a plane ticket to Chicago. And so I drove down to Chicago and picked her up at the airport. And then we headed the rest of the way down to where my brother and his wife live. And, cool. um, and then we spent the night there. And then the next morning we, um, you know, we spent a lot of time discussing <laughs> what time should we leave? You know, we we just really did We figured, yeah, there's going to be traffic, but we don't know how much. And, uh-huh. you know, it was a whole thing. Um, but it worked out really, really well. We, we drove south, you know, where we were, it was going to be, you know, 100% total at something like... 20 past one or something. Uh-huh. Right. Um, we left at 645 in the morning. We drove for close to four hours. Wow. Um, wow. Including traffic, you know, and but the traffic wasn't terrible. It was okay. Yeah. Um, and we, we were aiming to just kind of be in the path, but we didn't know exactly where we were going to be, to mm-hmm. end up. Um. So as we're driving, my brother says, you know, what we need is like a church parking lot <laughs> so that it will be like semi-public, you know, where we could park. Yeah. Uh-huh. But we don't want big crowds. Um, but we do want like some woods or a cornfield nearby. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's so specific. <laughs> Very involved. Yeah. That was for, you know, private... Um, place to go if you needed a bathroom um oh i see that was what the the cornfield or the and or the woods were for so anyway (laughs) we we just after a while we decided to get off the the highway where everybody was and we started Mm -hmm. just heading southeast and um into the path and after a while we were just on these country roads and we saw a sign that said you know the Methodist church is this way and it's in like three churches were down this road. So it's like, okay, that sounds good. (laughs) And, uh, and sure enough, we found a church that was 
across the street from a cornfield and next wow. to some next to some woods and hey. it even had a picnic table so and we were the only ones there so wow. it was it was great that's awesome <laughs> so yeah and we just we had our our lunch and our card game and we hung out <laughs> and and kind of waited for the for the big moment and uh-huh. and it was actually very cool. We really, wow. we were all glad that we had made the effort to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it did get pretty dark, you know. I mean, it got yeah. to where it looked like sunset, but all the way, you know, three hundred and sixty degrees. Not how it's like darker on one side and lighter on the other. Yeah, uh-huh. it was. It was dark all uniformly around, and then. Uh-huh. Cicadas started making no. noise. Oh wow! Yeah. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it it was really quite cool. We were... How long was it dark for? Um, it only lasted about two minutes. The hundred percent cicadas to- were excitable then, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Wow. Um, but you know, it was pretty neat to to just yeah. watch it slowly pass over you know you mm-hmm. start with just like this tiny little bite out of the yeah. top corner of the sun uh-huh. and then it got bigger and bigger and um and and then we we kind of we decided not to wait for the whole thing to be over you know we watched when it was fully covered mm-hmm. when it was at 100 percent occlusion or whatever you want to call it but yeah. then then we decided to get on the road <laughs> <laughs> and we made it back, you know, in a in good time. Um, and we heard from some of my brother's friends and colleagues that they were on the road for hours more than we yeah. were. Oh. So, yeah. So we for some... us on the West Coast, the gathering spot was in Oregon, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. my son had friends go up and took them double the time it normally takes yeah. to come yeah. back and. My parents wanted to go down, and they were saying that the Holiday Inn was going for eight hundred dollars that night. Oh my gosh! Before, yeah. <laughs> so it was. So we we're just like, no, we'll stay here. <laughs> right. And as much and behold, fun as that it was sounds, not nearly as eventful <laughs> as your church yeah, parking I mean, lot experience. It, if I didn't have my brother to stay with the night before, you know, to a place, a free place to stay that was within driving distance of the path you know that's what made it feasible to do Mm -hmm. and the fact that my son was at camp so um oh yeah I didn't have to worry about what he was going to be doing all day (laughs) um although I mean I could have brought him with I guess if he was if he was around but but it was kind of nice to have just a siblings that is cool um, trip you know so yeah we really had fun it was nice wow that's nice. You looked very styling in your eclipse glasses and your pictures. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty hard to take a selfie when you're wearing glasses that it's, I mean, it's black. You can't see Yeah, anything. yeah. So they're just, are they just like very, very, very dark sunglasses? I've never been into the eclipse or put a pair of eclipse sunglasses on or really, you know, cared. But what are they like? Yeah, they they're extremely dark. I mean, the only thing you can see through them if they're if they're legit, you know, I uh-huh. I understand there were some that weren't, but um oh, wow. if they are doing what they're supposed to do, they they block out like everything so that when you look through them, the only thing that you can see is the sun itself. Huh. Mm. So, wow. yeah. Cannot Very see cool. your your camera to take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> That's for well, sure. Apparently my daughter had the use of some glasses at school and she said she saw it when she put them on. Oh yeah. But like it just didn't get dark. I mean the light was huh. Yeah, I mean it for, for where we were, it, it really didn't get dark until it was almost 100% covered. Yeah. Hmm. So it was hard to see you know if you weren't if you weren't that close to where you were getting like 95, 96, 97% coverage then I don't think it would be I don't think you could notice that yeah. the darkness yeah I mean it looked weird it looked like 
strangely like desaturated the light yeah um, yeah before it saw. was fully dark yeah but it definitely didn't really look dark until it was almost hmm. covered wow so. yeah that's so very cool that, thank you for sharing your eclipse story that, that is nice. my eclipse report <laughs> the eclipse for 2017 report. there will be another one in 2024 <laughs> come back in 2024 when it will be <laughs> where is it supposed to be then Let's it's going to start south and move northeast. It's actually going to pass right over Carbondale, Illinois, which is where it passed this time as well. Hmm. Um, wow. Where it was very, but it was They're just close the eclipse, to where we Eclipse Center. Yeah, close to where we were, but much more crowded. Well, we'll uh-huh. look forward to hearing from you then, Catherine, for the next <laughs> we'll Eclipse see. report. Because <laughs> Nicole and I will still be in our houses. <laughs> yeah, well, I think my brother and his wife are hoping that they will not be living there anymore <laughs> when that time comes. So we may be out of luck. <laughs> wow. Well, on that note, hey, we should probably do our podcast. Although sure, I feel like I we've already so. done a big portion Speaking of it. Speaking of other phenomena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of other excitement, interesting and exciting events, <laughs> that's right. It's today's podcast. <laughs> Hello, you're setting the expectations a little high there, Nicole. <laughs> Maybe you're like we're we're more like the eclipse in California and New Jersey. We're not an Illinois eclipse level of excitement. <laughs> we're not Illinois level eclipse. We're like, hey, the light looks a little different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, well, we're exciting enough, and I, uh, you know. That's, that's, you don't need to wear glasses. In however. my mind, we're exciting, and that's what's important. <laughs> that's right. That's so, right. Proceed. Here we are. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Parenting Roundabout, a weekly podcast about the things that parents are talking about, obsessing about, and complaining about right now, or reporting on. And I'm Nicole <laughs> Erdix, with, and with me today are Terry Morrow. Hello. And Catherine Haleko. Hello. And today on the podcast, we're going to talk about our recent texts. On our Friday speed round, share some stuff we like on the Roundabout Roundup and do some shameless self-promotion. But first, we're going to talk about a different kind of entertainment, one that is enjoyed by our children and maybe not necessarily by us. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And one that is as baffling to me as Eclipse Mania. That's right. So, (laughs) Terry, was this something that you... (laughs) Kind of nod on for a bit before well, mentioning. I wanted to check with you guys because I think I've heard from you before about your kids watching different sorts of things. It seems to me when my kids were little, we would always sit in front of the TV together. I would watch their little kitty shows. We were always on the same page with entertainment. I knew all the show, even you know, as they grew up and they were watching Disney Channel. I knew all the shows they were. I knew all the characters. I knew the actors. I, you know, I made an effort to participate with them in whatever level of entertainment they were enjoying. Now my daughter is watching all these YouTube videos. I have no idea what she's watching. I, she mm. she says she says drops names all the time in conversation. When I said, "Oh, who is that?" she says, "Oh, it's somebody on my YouTube show." And when did this happen? <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like they got tired of us knowing what they were watching, and so they went and invented this whole nother thing off there someplace <laughs> that we can't sit on the couch and watch with them. So, you know, my daughter's very much into these various YouTube series, and she also, on the actual television, has started watching Big Brother, which makes me feel like mm. I have failed in some significant way. Cringe. <laughs> I feel, I fear that Dancing with the Stars was the gateway drug, and now she's watching Big Brother, and she's <laughs> buying back episodes of Big Brother from iTunes. So I am somewhat in despair about this entertainment of the young people in my house. I don't know what my, my son is on his phone pretty much all the time. He doesn't watch TV, doesn't play on computers. He's on his phone. I'm sure he's watching things. I don't know what they are. Hmm. So I am feeling like an old lady befuddled by the ways of young, of the young. And I thought I would check in and see you guys. Do your kids watch these YouTube videos of families and people who, I guess, I don't even know what you call them. I don't think they're vlogs. Are, are they vlogs? I don't, maybe they are. I don't know. But mm. they seem to be quite popular with the uh, with the kids. Do you have what a do, name? What are your kids you... watching? She, she watches these ones that are families. There's a whole bunch of different families that she watches. And now, apparently, there's a little... They, all the different families of all the different YouTube videos she watches got together and are in one place. Oh. And 
Uh, so they must all know each other. I don't know. It's very mm. strange. I hear little snippets. I walk in sometimes. Today I was watching for about five minutes a, a video that was just basically people jumping into the pool. Oh. <laughs> I watched it Sounds for a little while. Thrilling. And then I thought, well, they, they had like rigged up something with balls with like floating and they were like beach balls. They looked like fabric balls of some sort. And first little kids were jumping on them and then, then adults were jumping on them. And I'm like, Okay, can we go back to watching Barney? Because I think I enjoy that more. Can we go back into the past. So, so this is the thing, I guess, right? Do your kids watch have YouTube videos that they watch? YouTube series or whatever we call them? Yes, my mine do for sure. My my daughter um, used to watch a ton of like hair and makeup tutorials. Uh-huh. Um, and I think she's, she's off that a little bit. And then she has like at least one of those families that she, that she watches for sure. Um, and I think it might, one of them is one of the ones that your daughter watches because I've seen on Facebook, but, um, (laughs) but also she watches older TV shows. Like recently she started watching Survivor and I (laughs) said, are you like what season are you watching? And she's like, oh, no, I'm not watching a season. I just watch clips of like yeah. vi- like the challenges and stuff. Like I don't understand how that's like interesting if you don't even know who the people are and like what's at stake in the challenge, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. My but, my daughter keeps saying of Big Brother, I really don't understand what the contest is or what they're even doing, but it's just so fun to watch. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you could not tie me down and make me watch Big Brother. I would, you know. <laughs> how, how is yeah, anything my, about that entertaining? And my son has, he, not as much as he used to, but he still does watch for sure um, people playing video games. You know, like people <laughs> record themselves as they play a game yeah right. and then he watches the youtube which <laughs> is really enough to make me want to stick needles in my eyes like i cannot <laughs> stand watching people play video games like when he when he's playing a game and he'll watch this watch this i'm like i can't i i'm sorry <laughs> no I, that is i just can't well are these videos supposed to give him tips is it like figuring out how to do it I guess, but I don't know. But I think he even watches games that he doesn't even play. Like, wow. Which, wow. I, I feel like I this understand. is all just like a big prank on us, you know? <laughs> they all got together. All the young people got together and said, hey, let's start watching videos of random families and people playing video games. Our parents will be able to figure that out. <laughs> They'll and be they were so successful. confused. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent work, children. Mm-hmm. You did it. <laughs> Don't understand. You made us be the old people going, these beetles with their hair. I don't understand. <laughs> exactly. Nicole, are you, are you joining us on the over the hill, these kids today side? Uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm at the other end of the tunnel. Like, yeah. I'm, or I'm, I'm, I don't know, on the hill. I don't know. But <laughs> My daughter is at a point now where she's watching the shows that we watch. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So in that sense, it's like, okay, this is kind of cool because we can actually sit down and watch something together. Yeah. Like, for example, we watched The Handmaid's Tale together. Oh. Um, which yeah. I really enjoyed. I read the book. I, I um, enjoy doesn't seem like the right word for that. Yeah, for that. Well, <laughs> I read the book too and enjoy. Um, I don't know if it was enjoy, no. but it was really well done like you're in that cowering sense. in terror on the sofa together it's, like it was it was like daughter well there. no because it wasn't like <laughs> you know horror or anything oh, okay. it was just it was a very well done moving emotional series <laughs> so um that so and then then of course there's the lighter ones okay and I have to admit I did watch this Riverdale I don't <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> Catherine is Terry, that has one of the Sprouses that? in it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember the Sprouses. We used to sit and watch The Sweet Life together. I did oh, used to over. watch The Sweet Life yeah. back in the day. <laughs> and now he's some gothy kid on Riverdale, right? Yeah, yeah, he's Jughead. 
Um, so, you know, like we kind of, there's things that we, what else do we watch? We watched, um, oh, what was that big one last year that came out? Oh, it was a series. This is Not Us? Sense8. What is it? Um, oh. Do you know what I'm talking the, the kids, the uh, kid on the bike? Okay. Oh, Stranger Things. Stranger Things. I don't know why I was thinking Sense8. This but... is like, this would be a good like quiz thing. We just mention a random detail from a past show. <laughs> there was a bike. Can remember it. <laughs> a boy on a bike. <laughs> like, how <laughs> random is that? <laughs> but you, Terry, totally knew what you were but talking about. I totally about. knew what it was. <laughs> See, I never watch anything, but I read a lot about it. Right. Yeah. So I got those details. Yeah. Right here. So I, I feel like... We're kind of done with those days of, because she watched those beauty guru, gur, gurus. I can't even talk tonight. She watched those beauty guru. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Those beauty videos. Be- beauty videos, like endlessly, like no tomorrow. Really? And she just, just really, you know, she'll watch the odd video on YouTube if it's kind of popped up on her Facebook feed or, you know, mm-hmm. if it's something that was on Twitter or whatnot. But she doesn't actively seek out one specific person. Hmm. So yeah, and my son, I you know he's he uh, missed that whole YouTube video mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So yeah, that seems yeah. fairly recent. So now, when you're watching things uh, with your daughter and having this glorious bonding time, <laughs> are you watching things that she wants to watch, or is she watching things that you want to watch, or is fifty fifty? It's mutually agreed upon. So okay. if I'm interested in something. I wouldn't think in, you would normally sit down and watch Riverdale. That doesn't sound like something that would necessarily be on your You know what? List. Actually, the reason I started, actually, no, because she started it and then I started it behind her and then uh, we caught up. But I was intrigued because I wanted to see how they played out the characters. Well, that's because true. Because I had read the comic books growing up. Mm-hmm. Right? So I was kind of intrigued to see how. They played out the characters. It was kind of fun to watch. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I said fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun to watch. And yeah. um, so, yes, we usually, and, and if she's not interested, then she'll just go upstairs and mm-hmm. uh, leave me alone on the couch in the dark by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling like I failed as a mother. Um, so no but, pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we usually, we have to come to some sort of an agreement. It's, huh. um, you know. We're usually on our phones as well. Yeah. So I don't know how well, bonding that is. She might be playing games. Yeah. She <laughs> that's might just what be I sitting do to keep myself just... awake while I watch TV. She feels obligated, but we don't watch anything together as a family. My son doesn't watch any TV at all. The the TV that my daughter watches is she records the most bizarre things. We're always going through the the, the D V R and thinking who recorded that? And it's always her. <laughs> but she, I mean, we sort of watch Dancing with the Stars together, except she falls asleep halfway through. So then she's always watching it the next day. So it's mostly my husband and I watching TV and falling asleep on the couch. Catherine, do you watch TV with your kids? Do you have a communal viewing experience? Maybe for sports, right? Mm, occasionally for sports. And sometimes um, with either either one of the kids, if it's like, oh, let's... Let's hang out and watch something together. It's, um, with my son, it's like Treehouse Masters or okay. Tiny House. He likes the oh, Tiny House. Fun. He likes the Tiny House shows. And the Treehouse show is, is good, too, if you've never seen yeah. that one. And with my daughter, it might be, you know, House Hunters or um, Fixer Aww. Upper or, you know, we those kind of shows. We used to watch HTV together. We yeah. used to watch the Food Network. Nobody watches that with me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just the other night, my daughter and I were in a hotel room together and we Aww. we put on HGTV because that's just usually something that we both. Oh yeah, will. there's always something on there. Yeah. yeah, but then she like disappeared into the bathroom <laughs> with her phone, <laughs> so it didn't last that long. Aww, that's what I'm saying. Ditched. But that's okay. <laughs> oh well, I hmm. miss those days. I'm... Yeah. Well, maybe one day. One day <laughs> they'll watch with me again. Maybe she'll she'll go through her video phase and then she'll be ready to watch, you know, the stuff. Riverdale. That I watch. <laughs> the thing is, I watch things. Uh, most of the things I watch are boring to her, so I would have to watch something she wants to watch. And if it's Big Brother, that ain't gonna happen. So <laughs> just she'll have to get out of that phase. <laughs> Perhaps we've just come to a parting of the 
of the uh, entertainment ways. And we need to each blaze our own trail from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very dramatic. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> well, do you think that if you were going to watch them together, you would text each other about that it? Is quite likely wow. that we would i would say <laughs> it's starting i would text her that's right and Andrew she would say stars. i'm coming come on this is the profundity of texting in my house that's right well <laughs> that is the topic of our speed round for this week our friday speed round is what was the last text that you sent to a family member <laughs> So, Nicole, was it something exciting about with, with one of your Australian visitors, or was it like, hurry up, it's time to leave? <laughs> no, actually, this is, and this, I didn't mean to do it this way or set it up like that, but this is literally what, could because when we first started to plan a time to record this podcast, I said that I couldn't do it at a certain time because I had to go get our old blue car smog tested. Mm-hmm. So I went today and I sent my family a text as I was waiting for it to get smogged. <laughs> and that turned out to be the last text message I sent my family on our group chat, on our group text. And it was getting the blue car smogged. Everyone crossed their fingers. <laughs> <laughs> as in, please, I hope it passes because oh I just my. don't want to deal with repairing it. <laughs> I'm just enjoying so, the verb smogged in this in this context. <laughs> we all know what, what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I think that's a California thing, but yes. Oh, okay. Is it so you don't we get don't your have vehicle to do smogged? It. Yeah, no. we, we like our smog out here, you know. Oh. No, I, well, I, for those listeners who don't know what I'm talking about, it's, whatever. Yeah. It's when you have to go get your car checked to make sure that it's not putting out all sorts of fumes into the atmosphere and especially if it's older you have to get it checked once a year and if it doesn't pass the smog test then you've got to get it repaired mm -hmm. and it could you know be costly so it's like okay <laughs> cross my fingers hope it passes right so did it pass so it did oh, it was successfully smogged Yes. All those Especially crossed God fingers <laughs> did the job. <laughs> Good thing you texted. <laughs> so that was my last text. Very good. Very nice. How about you, Terry? I'm looking at my phone. I don't have any good... I mean, the most recent ones are just like, you know, yes or <laughs> happy face. Those aren't interesting. So I'll go with the one. I'll tell a bad story on myself. Um... My husband went, he just recently got a new job and he went to fill out paperwork for it. And I had told him, I had given him a deposit slip from our checkbook and I said, you know, get direct deposit. Right. You must have direct deposit because he used to, his, his old job, he used to always like getting paper paychecks. But, you know, I'm the one who pays the bills and the time lapse between when that paper paycheck is put in your hand and the money is available to me is unacceptable now mm -hmm. in this century. So <laughs> it's like... Get the direct deposit. So, you know, he goes off and, and does this stuff. And I you know, I guess it was all done online. And uh, it sent him emails with copies of all the things. And I get, I have his email on my phone because he never checks his email. So I check it for him. And I see all these things coming through and I'm looking. Oh, interesting. And I'm looking, opening the little PDFs and I see the one for the banking. So, oh, let me check and make sure we got the direct deposit. And I open it and it says paper checks <laughs> and the top of my head blew off and I start cursing. I had this ridiculous tantrum, which is why I'm always afraid because it's like I tamp stuff down and I tamp stuff down and then some stupid thing causes everything to explode. So I have a text here on my phone, all caps. Did you not take direct deposit? So what it turned out was that he could not get the thing to take the direct deposit he kept putting the number in and it wouldn't work and it wouldn't work and it wouldn't work. So finally the ladies there said, just put down paper check. We'll figure it out. We'll get it working for you. So in the first place, it was not his fault. He had tried to do de direct deposit. <laughs> and then of course, because this is what happens to us controlling people. The reason it didn't work, folks, is because I gave him a deposit slip which has the wrong routing number on it. <laughs> you have to give a check. The check has the right routing number. So uh. it was my fault <laughs> that he didn't do it. So I will look at this text every now and then, all in caps, 
and remember the fury with which I typed it <laughs> and use it as a reminder that I'm a complete idiot. So <laughs> that was my last embarrassing text. <laughs> anyway. I did something like that recently where it, it wasn't by text, but where I hollered at my husband for letting my daughter go somewhere without unloading the dishwasher first. <gasps> yeah. And then... Yeah, she did unload it. <laughs> she unloaded it between the time that I checked and got annoyed about it and the time. Oh, no. <laughs> this needs to be a periodic speed round. Inappropriate rages that you have done recently. Oh, my gosh. When I think back to how angry I was, it was so stupid. Why do we... Sometimes you just need to explode. Right. Uh, well, my... My last one is not very exciting either. It was that um, my husband sent a picture. He he got some kind of offer to get free playing cards with a with a photo that he <laughs> supplied, and so he okay. showed us the picture, the goofy goofy picture of our dog that he got. <laughs> Mm -hmm. on some playing <laughs> cards so i had to send back the heart eye emoji <laughs> and i can show you guys the dog picture and you'll you'll have smiley heart eyes too <laughs> and that's it for the friday speed round you can hear a new one every monday through thursday Great. And up next, we bring you some things that we've read or seen or used recently that we want to shout out and share with you Terry, what do you have? Yeah, I am very happy right at the moment with the new Hamilton app, which has videos and stickers and various things. But most importantly, they have moved the ticket lottery for $10 Hamilton tickets completely to the app, which mm. I'm sure has ticked a lot of people off. But if you have the app and it works well, it makes it really super easy for people who don't live in an area where Hamilton is or care. What they do is every for every performance, they have like, I think, 23 tickets that they, they do off in this lottery where if you win the lottery, you can get your tickets for $10 instead of the, you know, $250 and up that they would cost you normally. So $10 you know, because Alexander Hamilton is on the $10 bill. Exactly. Yes. Ham for <laughs> ham. So it used to be you'd have to go, I mean, it's never been hard. It used to be you have to go to a website, you have to type all your information in each time, and you would send it, and if you won, you went to that day. So it's like you would have three or four hours to kind of get yourself together and get there. Now, on the app, you just enter the information once, and well, you know every time there's a lottery, it asks you if you want to enter, you hit a button, you're entered. And it's for the next day when you oh. get it. Oh, which huh. is glorious. So I will have time to find somebody to go with me and figure out how I'm going to get in the city. And, you know, the, the whole drop everything and go nature of it used to freak me out. Now, all this is wonderful. Of course, I'm still never going to win the lottery, but at least it doesn't, you know, it seems like it would be easier <laughs> if I ever did. Uh, and it's certainly easier to, you know, you enter, enter through the app and then it sends you a notification saying you didn't win. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, appreciate that. It makes it much easier for me. I can see if I was not somebody with a smartphone, it would tick me off. But I am someone with a smartphone. So I say so yay. There. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Very cool. Excellent. It's making my daily dream easier. Mm -hmm. I do like that is cool that you it's not for the same day. Yes, isn't that That's wonderful? Rather... I'm so happy they made that change. Yeah. That's merciful. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile over here. <laughs> like, this Hamilton stuff is going right over my head. <laughs> oh, but it's in LA. I know. It just opened in LA. It is. It's coming yeah. to a theater. You, you could enter the lottery, Nicole. I could. You could. You should. It, it, the LA lottery is on the app. I could. It would be totally worth it for 10 bucks. That's right. Go to the uh, Pantages. Have you ever been to the Pantages for something? I have. A couple times. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. taken over the Pantages for a little while. And. They're doing, I'm sure they're going to be doing I stuff think. with schools. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be there for a while. Okay. <laughs> okay. Think about it. <laughs> Catherine, what do you have for us this week? Um, I just wanted to mention this is nothing new, um, but it's a series of books for very, very young children, babies and toddlers, um, from Usborne Books. And it's, 
I know that Usborne has like a home sales arm yeah. to it. I love mm-hmm. those books, but though. they also ha- these books are available just in regular stores, and yeah. I just bought a couple uh-huh. of them today um, for a gift, and they are the series called "That's Not My." And it's like, that's not my lion, that's not my truck, that's not my mermaid, whatever. Uh And in each page, you know, that's not my lion, its mane is too fuzzy or whatever. And then you, it has like the touch and feel, like the different textures, you know, Uh that's, that's not my mermaid, her tail is too shiny or something and it'll be like a shiny fabric that you can touch or whatever Uh um and i mean these have been around since my kids were little but they are Mm -hmm. just they're so cute and they're so well done and and kids seem to really like them so next time you need a present for a baby or a toddler Think about those. Do it now before your baby or toddler only wants to watch you That's do videos. That's right. <laughs> Soon they will not want you to read to them. Oh, gosh. Well, um, <laughs> speaking of reading, I was on Twitter today and I was reading about the little firestorm that Marie Claire set off with their article about women's cycles coinciding with the eclipse. <sighs> Anyway, oh, for goodness sake. Yeah, a super, super bad article. <laughs> totally dumbed down women. Twitter was in an uproar. And oh, it doesn't take much to put Twitter in an uproar. No, <laughs> but I could see why. I mean, it was so bad. Of all the things that they could write about the eclipse, that's what they choose, <laughs> please. Um, anyway, so one response caught my eye, and then it led me to her blog and I started reading through her blog and I it's really good I quite enjoyed it it's um called uh dr jen gunter dot wordpress dot com and she is a um an obstetrician gynecologist pain management doctor anyway mm. she's got quite a background but she goes through in her blog and she just debunks all these myths and, you know, these, this fake news we're fed. <laughs> and, but specific um, yeah, to women's quite health usually, right? It is specific, yes. So for the men that are listening, this is for women's health. And, um, <laughs> and it's interesting because we hear a lot and a lot of it is very, um, quote unquote, dumbed down and non-scientific based and um, not data-driven information and she chooses to go uh, the more reliable scientific route and it's it's eye-opening like really it's kind of like okay that makes Mm -hmm. sense (laughs) so anyway that's on my bookmark on my computer so nice on my safari so i will be checking that blog out every once in a while and you should too cool okay well Now we are going to move on to our final segment in which having shared with you things that other people have done that we enjoyed, we share things that we have done that we think that you will enjoy. So Nicole, what are you shamelessly self-promoting today? Well, I have another little throwback piece and coincides with school. And uh, actually, I just realized that I put this into a graphic a couple weeks ago. So I'm just going to talk about it again because <laughs> <laughs> I think my graphic only had seven ways ah, but here are graphic. this article is the top 10 ways to tell if your child's school is inclusive so three more ways <laughs> if you go check out the article on my site <laughs> don't be lazy and just go with the graphic that's got the fewer things get the whole list so absolutely <laughs> Catherine what are you self-promoting today oh I just Oh, this yeah, is a fun I did one. A, a fun little piece on readersdigest.com. Things not to bring to a bake sale. Treats you should <laughs> not bring to a bake sale. And um, my it. editor said, oh, you can crowdsource it. So I had an actually rather lively discussion on my Facebook wall. I followed that discussion. It, it was enjoyable. It started getting a little heated and I started to worry that it was going to get entirely out of hand <laughs> was it the breast milk and the brownies that no got that was that that wasn't it actually <laughs> it was the um it started to get like it could have gone astray on on allergies um 
Oh. Yeah. So. Oh, And yeah, also well. on what, like, what constitutes a bake sale versus, like, a snack table or snack bar. Uh-huh. But I was able to incorporate all that. Not the breast milk, but uh, I was able to incorporate the other parts into um, into the story. So it was it's it's fun. Uh-huh. So you can see that. So what's a share with us a couple of things you should well, never bring. Well, as one of the people on my on my Facebook wall said, you know, any cookies with raisins because they uh-huh. are so terrible. They're so soul sucking or something she said something like she oh had my some strong words people have strong <laughs> feelings about raisins she said they're fake yeah. chocolate chi- they're soul crushing fake chocolate chips i believe is what <laughs> she said. like me a good oatmeal raisin cookie but yes. that's okay so things like that you know like raw cookie dough please don't give everyone that comes to your bake sale <laughs> salmonella um yeah. You know, I and I actually happened to see the friend today who who suggested blueberry pie. Um, like it's way too messy. Mm. <laughs> yes. And I saw her today. She's like, Ugh. woohoo! I made it into the article. <laughs> she was pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, that's at rd.com. Cool. That was a great idea. Yeah, it was cute. That was really funny. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, for my shameless self promotion, I have been for quite a little while here now, uh, sharing things that I have written for the Friendship Circle blog. And sadly, this is the last week I'm going to be able to do that because my little gig as the blog manager for Friendship Circle is ending. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a little retrospective, I'm going to share the link to all the posts that I've written during my 10-month tenure as blog manager. And uh, so there's quite a lot of humor and and some roundup type posts and a few informative posts. So uh, take a little walk down memory lane with me, will you, of my (laughs) time-sucking but otherwise enjoyable (laughs) role with Friendship Circle. I wish them well, but I probably won't be hyping them on this podcast anymore. Unless they promote Nicole's book. There you go. That's true. That's true. Anytime that that, uh, Nicole writes a post for them, I'm going to mention that you're promoting a book soon. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) All right. Well, I think that is it for this week's episode of Parenting Roundabout. We hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us every week. You can listen to podcast episodes on parentingroundabout.com or download them from Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe so you can get all of our podcasts and mini podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter where I am at C. Haleco, Terry is at Mamatude, and Nicole is at Nicole Eridix. And you can follow the podcast on Twitter, that's Roundabout Chat, and look for us on Facebook, Pinterest, Tumblr, YouTube, and Instagram. Best of all, stop by our podcast page at parentingroundabout.com and read recaps, find links on all the stories we mentioned, and talk back in the comments. Thanks so much to John Morin for providing our in and out music, and I wish everyone a great week. (laughs) 